What is going on you guys? I know it has been a minute since we last uploaded a video, but literally since Sunday of last week, it's almost been a whole week, it has been raining every single day, all day long, with only a brief, like every now and then I'll stop for like 20, 30 minutes and then it starts raining again. And it's not like Florida rain where it's like a thunderstorm in the afternoon and then it goes away. It's like this annoying, like misty drizzle and it gets a little bit hard sometimes, but it is rains 24 seven and it is so annoying. I can't get anything done. I've wanted from this video for a while. There's a whole bunch of new subscribers on the channel, which is amazing. Thank you guys so much if you're new. Um, I've been wanting to do a video of an overview of my car. There's been a lot of new questions and I want to put one video out and kind of answer all of them, but it's hard to film when it's just raining all day long. I didn't want to film this video in the barn um, because of bad lighting. So I've been waiting for this. But it's been taking forever and I've been the last clip you saw all the cinematic stuff that's been filmed over like a three hour period today Because it stops raining I go film for a second then it starts raining again, and it's just a giant pain, but it's Kind of better right now in between like little breaks I'm gonna try and film and go over the entire car But like it has been raining every single day It's supposed to rain till like another week straight just of just non-stop rain And I'm just not used to it because in Florida it'll rain in the afternoon for like an hour like a giant hurricane thunderstorm And then it's done and you're good, but it is, it's been raining for almost a week straight like this is I don't like it. So the hopeful plan for today, I'm standing up here by the way where it's dry and it's not out there raining because it is raining again right now. I'm waiting for it to pass for a second. But the plan is to go from front to back, everything in between, underneath, on top, whatever, explain everything in this car, the entire thing, um, and try to answer every single question that I've seen. All right, so a quick overview of the car before we get started with all the parts. This is a 1997 Volkswagen Jetta GLS, so one of the highest models you can get before like the GLX, like the TDI. It had sunroof, power windows, power locks, radio, AC, all that kind of fun stuff. The car originally was black when I first got it. It's an original five-speed car. It was a 2.0 when I first got it as well. Pretty much the overview of the car. I bought it in Florida. It's always been a Florida car. I am the third owner. The first owner had it from new to 150,000 miles. The second owner only had it from 150 to 155, and then I got it. So the second owner really didn't have it too long. Um, I am the third owner though. Uh, no wrecks in the car, which is very good. Very clean car, no rust, all Florida car. So that's a brief overview of the car, and now I'll get into all the parts on it. Starting off in the front of the car, we have a European Vento front bumper. This was originally texture tile, which I sanded smooth, make it a smooth top one. Smooth top ones are much harder to define, but if you have a texture one, you can sand it smooth. It takes a lot of time to do it, but that's what this originally was. And also you can tell it's a Vento bumper because it has the one, two, three, the four fins versus the six. Six is usually for the American bumper, the golf bumper, or the European golf bumper, uh, but the Vento actually has four. The Vento also is a different shape than all the rest of the bumpers, being a little bit more of a curved right here and it's also longer on the end so this lip on the bottom this is a Rieger GTX front lip for a Vento there's only a handful of lips that actually fit the Vento bumper and this is one of them being because the sides are longer so this lip wouldn't fit on that golf over there because it'd be too long on the sides and the curves a bit different so that's the bumper and that's the lip on the bottom over here we have a set of hella smoked uh, dummies and fogs and then 3d printed Kanye shades right there This is an early phase one vento grill which means this metal part down here actually comes off So it's a two-piece grill which is fancy I guess there's a vr6 grill which a grill bad which is messed up I need to get a new one and then we have smoked e-codes on the front So that pretty much brings us to the whole entire front of the car vento bumper vento gtx uh, front lip e-codes phase one grill Kanye shades smoke dummies 
I think that's just about it for the front section here. There's also some plastic tabs or the little shark fins down there on the little fin things down there. And I think that's it for the front of the car. There's also a European rad support underneath all this. So I'll show you guys later. And then that's about it for the front. Moving to the side of the car. Obviously one of my favorite parts of the car, this fender here. I got this fender from a junker in Florida from you pull and pay for $40. And it was just sitting there. I don't know if I have the picture of the car. I pulled it off anymore. Um, I don't have that phone anymore, but still, it was just sitting there. I, I had to snag it, 40 bucks, one of my favorite pieces on the car. As it's told, companies made this kind of fender with events on it in the 90s, and then people made their own. I don't know which this is. It looks very well done, it's all the cuts are nice. Um, there's no markings on it or stamps or any part number, so I don't know if a company made it or it's homemade. Either way, it is one of my favorite parts of the car. These are also both American fenders, so the European one will have a little either a rectangle square, a rectangle cutout there for the light, or an oval one, whether it's an old model or a newer model. But these are both American fenders on the car. I did that because I like having no side marker at all. The American bumper has one there, and the European one doesn't. They have their marker up there, but I had nothing either way, which is very nice. I had the clean look of that. Up next, let's talk about these. These are my pride and joy, my Zobbers. These, I love these wheels so, so much. I got these wheels imported from Japan. I paid 600 bucks for the entire set. Those lips over there are the original lips on the wheels. These wheels were 16 by seven in the front, 16 by seven and a half in the rear. Fully rebuilt custom lips by E Wheel Works. I paid more for these four custom lips than the wheels. So I said I paid 600 bucks for the wheels imported from Japan. I paid 825 for these four lips all around. Got to pay to play. I had to send them the whole face because no 16 inch lip with 32 holes will fit these wheels. Not a single one. I tried every single lip I could find. BBS, Smith, everything. Nothing fit. So custom made lips were, were the way to go. Um, it was pricey, but I absolutely love the wheels. They look so good. It's a two inch lip in the front. Two and a half in, in the rear. And they're 16 by nine squared all around. All original hardware on each bolt head. And actually says arrow, which is really, really cool. Super old school stuff. I almost had to cut one out, but then I stopped because I wasn't sure if I could find a replacement. And I looked online, I couldn't find a single other one of these original bolts. So I didn't cut it out. I just took my time, finally got it to break free. So every single bolt hand polished. My hands were killing me, but well worth it. Um, I absolutely I love these wheels so much. They're powder coated. This is glacier white, so it has like a blue tint to it. Kind of matches the car, which is really cool. Um, but I absolutely love these wheels. They're 16s, which is very very rare. You can find Zobbers in 17s uh, fairly easily, but to find 16s is almost impossible. I know of uh, two other sets, but both sets are all stock specs. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I have the only custom set of these out there. Pretty sure. I'm not positive, but pretty sure. I found two other sets so far. Um, one guy in Japan has them and some guy in the States has a set, um, but they're both stock specs. So as I know so far, this is the only um, custom set of these wheels. Like I said, two inch slips in the front, two and a half inch in the rear. I don't know. These wheels are super 90s. They're very dirty right now, but still, I love these wheels. They fit the car very, very well. And I love how much the lip actually sticks out. One of my favorite things ever, and they do the car justice. They look so good on this car. And then two final quick points on the wheels here. One, the wheel specs. They're 16 by nine all around. The fronts are about 16 by nine ET. Some are around the 10 ish range, I wanna say. And the rears are 16 by nine. Some are around the ET zero to ET five range. And this car does have a Mark II rear beam, which brings both sides in about 12 millimeters, which is why these wheels actually fit on this car. If you were to try and put these wheels on a stock rear beam Mark III in the back, they're not gonna fit. So my wheel specs more than likely will not work for your Mark III unless your fenders are rolled and pulled all around and you have a Mark II rear beam and about two degrees of camber all around as well. So anyone who's asking about wheel specs, that's what they are. More than likely they will not work for your car unless you have the rest of the following supporting details to make it work. But yeah, those are the specs. Also, these are 4 by 100 to 5 by 114 adapters. The car being a four cylinder originally, I still have the stock axles in the car. One day I'll probably swap to 5 by 100 axles, but for now, um, this is just fine. Up next, we have these side skirts. These are Rieger GTX side skirts to match the Rieger GTX front lip. Super cool addition to the car. I'm glad I found these because it's kind of hard to find different side skirts for this car that aren't being run all over the place already. So this is a very good option. Not too many people have these in the car, which is really cool. I like them, but they're awesome. I love them. Very big, very boxy, very 90s. They flow with the front lip very good. I wish they offered a rear lip for a Vento, but they don't, which is why I made my own, which we'll talk about in just a second. But still, these 
these are awesome i love them the plan is eventually to have the front lip side skirts and rear lip all paint matched to the car so it's just one color all the way down but for now uh the black does pretty good up next we will go to the back of the car which has to be one of my favorite angles of this car because i love just how i don't know it's very square and boxy in the spoiler it looks great to me so starting at the very bottom we have a homemade lip that i did out of some garden supply which actually came out really good because i didn't like how the vento lip i, mean, I love the vento lip don't get me wrong but having the big boxy side skirts in the front lip didn't match with how small the factory lip was. So I made a little extension. Eventually, I want to find an actual vent over your lip for the car. But for now, I think this looks really good. I know a lot of you actually did this as well. It looks pretty cool. I like it. Um, I guess we'll talk about the exhaust real quick. These are super gorgeous polished Remus exhaust tips. It's not a Remus exhaust, just the exhaust tips because I got them from Omar. Um, and I love those things. But the exhaust on the car is two and a half inch piping all the way from the header back it's a high flow cat it's a magna flow high flow cat magna flow exhaust with dual pipes coming out the back sounds great i love how it sounds it sounds so so good it shoots fire it's fantastic it's one of my favorite things about the car moving up from the lip and the exhaust we have the vento bumper again this was another textured top bumper that i sanded smooth again it's very hard to find smooth top vento bumpers so working with what i got i had a texture top one sanded smooth match the front of the car and now it's good to go after that we have the european tub in the middle for the long plates to fit i have clear tail lights i love clear tail lights and then right here mm, this thing right here is more is probably the rarest thing on my car aside from the zobbers but this thing right here you can see the little this is a Cox Vento spoiler from Japan. This is the only one that I know of. I've been looking and looking and looking. It's the only one I know. I, I searched for about three and a half years for an Ottinger one, which is almost the same design, a little bit different, but virtually the same thing. Um, I came across this one. I bought it sight on scene. I said, hey, I don't care how much you want for it. I need it. So this is my Cox Vento spoiler. The plan for my car is there's an entire body kit, a Vento body kit made by Cox. It's a front, like three quarter spoiler, side skirts, rear, um, rear lip, and then the spoiler. I have this part, but I can't find the rest. The goal is one day have the entire car kitted with the Cox kit. So one day, but this thing right here, mm, pride and joy i love it so much i love the look of it i love how it's just clear in the center it's just i don't know it looks so so good it just really completes the back side of this car for me all right so i think that covers everything for the outside of the car except for the suspension it is on airlift slam series bags all around with manual management um but aside from that i think that covers everything oh and there's also the um the color of the car a lot of people ask me about the color of this car what's the paint code i want to paint my car the same color first off no, this is my color. You can try and copy it if you want, but I'm not going to give you, I'm not personally going to give you the paint color of this car. Number two, it's almost impossible to match this color because even when we tried to match the spoiler and the engine bay, we got it a little bit off. You can't really tell, but I know it's different. Um, this car is actually wrapped in Halo EFX. This car isn't actually painted, which again, most people don't know that until I tell them. Um, but the paint coat of this car, I just call it Miley Blue. It's my personal mix. I absolutely love it. It's it's beautiful. It's a it's like my version of a steel blue Mark III, which is a European color we didn't get in the States. Um, beautiful color. This car has flakes added to it. There's candy added to it. It's not based off steel blue by any means, um, but that's the closest I can tell people that it is. The paint coat, the name of the color is a whole different thing, but I just call it Miley Blue. It's my personal mix. Um, I just love this color. It's beautiful. I love it so, so much. But again, it's almost impossible to replicate this color. Even when we had all the ingredients for it, we still had it off just a little bit. So with more timing, we probably could have got it right. But still, it's just, I don't know. It's just like, I love this color so much. At some point, I want to pull the entire car apart and have it all painted again. I'll make sure everything's perfectly matched and paint the lip and the center to match the car as well. And that'll probably be the third version of this color because the first version of this color was a bit more silver. This is version two, which is a bit more blue than the first one. And version three will be somewhere around both of those. But I'm excited for that. But yes, this is Miley Blue. I'm not giving you the paint name or the paint coat of the car. 
sorry it's i mean i don't i don't have to it's my car it's my color i don't have to share that with you guys but i will give you guys um it's based off steel blue which is a european um vento color well mark three color in general that we didn't in the states is based off that color by no means is it anything from that paint code it's just kind of based off of that light blue metallic color this car has a lot more flake in it there's some candy in it it's way different but that's the closest i can tell you that it's kind of like based off of but yeah this is Miley Blue. All right, with that, we will go to the inside of the car, which has come such a long way since I first got this car. Starting off with the door card, we have a black leather puffy GLX door card. We have Mark 3.5 chrome door handles. Um, this car did have electric windows at one point, but I've replaced them all with cranks because the cranks always work. The electric ones kept breaking and breaking and breaking, so crank, uh, they're all been swapped to crank, so always works. All right, so there's a lot of stuff to go over inside this car. We'll start from the bottom and go to the top. Pretty much everything from the carpet to the headliner has been swapped in this car. This car had a tan carpet, tan seats, tan everything in here, the beaver color dash. The only thing that's still left is the, uh, the pillars are still the same tan, but starting here at the bottom, um, black carpet, we have OEM, Volkswagen Monster mats. There's a set of polished Sparco pedals down there, which are very dirty at the moment, but they are polished underneath all that dirt. These are Mark II GTI Recaro seats, and they've been redone beautifully in black leather by a shop in Orlando called Extreme Upholstery, a guy named Omar. Beautifully done job to match my black leathers in the rear. These are also GTI seats, so I do have the poles on the side, so I can do this with my seats. Most four-door cars wouldn't have that give a back door, but being GTI, I see if I can fold them forward uh, with the white Recaro stitched on there came out absolutely amazing center we have a mark 3.5 cabrio e-brake because I wanted the chrome button off there and then I got a new leather shift boot oh, a little boot around that in the center there we have a leather boot that's a custom Recaro shift knob and leather wrap piece on top the bottom is actually a OEM Volkswagen golf ball the metal one that I had polished as well. And then down the bottom, that is a Mark V shift bezel ring that goes around it that I cut that one off and glued it and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's all that. Black console swap for mine. Uh, the airlift gauges are down here at the bottom of the car. Airlift gauge down at the bottom. All my paddles are right here. We have some Pink Floyd buttons there and there. Chrome knobs for this section here. Factory radio. Uh, this is a Mark 3.5 dimple dash that I had painted and swapped out as well. Over here we have the silver face gauge cluster with the orange needles and I put chrome rings around each one. Again, tiny rest of the chrome there, the chrome here, little chrome accent pieces all over inside the car. Uh, Euro switch here. I used to have something wired to this, um, but I don't need more. So I need to get a new one because there's a hole drilled through this one. So I'll get a new blank for that. And then these are out of a Mark 5, I want to say. This little accent chrome piece is for the vents. I'm missing one here. I'm assuming it fell off in shipping, but I don't know where it's at. I'm, I'm hoping it's in the car somewhere. I haven't really checked yet. But usually there's one on each vent. But little accent pieces matching the rest of the chrome. All these little pieces. I like chrome a lot. So it looks little pieces here and they look really good. Of course, my handle is broken over there. I need to get a new glove box because this one broke the day I got the car. So... Is what it is, Mark Three Things. That is a signature from TJ Hunt. I met him the first time, I don't know, like three or four years ago, and I've met him a few times after that. But that's where TJ signed the car because his car's named Miley and so is mine. I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have the headliner up here and also the harness bar, which I'll talk about in just one second. A lot of people ask me what kind of brand this harness bar is. It's just a universal harness bar. I got it from a guy. I've tried this for 20 bucks a long, long time ago. He said it was for a Mark III and it actually wasn't, so I had to make custom brackets on the floor of the car to actually hold um, the arms that go down actually to the floor, but it's very, very sturdy. It's not gonna go anywhere, but there's no brand name on it. It's just a universal one. So if you go on Google and type in the universal harness bar, they all pretty much look the same. They have like adjustable arms over here, so you can kind of fit them in most cars, they bolt where your seat bolts go, there and there, and then again to the floor. If you have a Volkswagen, you have to make custom brackets on the floor, like little L brackets to relocate where the bolt goes. But it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. It's super solid, not gonna go anywhere. I've put little chrome accent bolts inside it to kind of match the rest of the chrome in the car. But that's pretty much it for the interior. I don't think there's anything else. We did the headliner. Um, this is a Corrado steering wheel over here. This isn't my normal steering wheel. I have a Momo one that usually goes in here, but I pulled it out for shipping. But other than that, I'm pretty sure that's just about everything um inside the car and then i guess okay so this is oh, you see my shifter already but now underneath this shifter this is a mark 402j shifter box fully rebuilt also been cut down i think two inches i cut it down and it's also been rebuilt in engine bay but it's like it's so it's so stiff and it clicks like listen to this like it's like the nicest sounding it feels amazing probably the best 
shifter setup you can possibly do for a VR6 aside from a thousand dollars CAE aside from that this is like the best thing you can do retains all factory look um, but mark 4 box down underneath fully rebuilt internals uh, cut shaft and then diesel gig up front but like man it just it clicks so unbelievably nice I love this thing. And speaking of the engine bay, let's talk about our last and final thing on the car, which is the engine. Coming to the heart of the beast here, the good old 12-valve VR6. So like I said, 12-valve VR6, the best looking VR6, and possibly the best sounding of all of them. I just love these motors so, so much. But this is actually a Mark IV 12-valve AFP block and head uh, my first vr6 that was a triple a vr6 got messed up it's still over there in the garage i still have it but this is what's in the car now so mark 4 block mark 4 head everything else is mark 3 accessory wire harness all that kind of fun stuff um 262 auto tech cams it has a tune file from ian inside the car as well it used to have an intake but i took it off because i thought we had to have a stock box over here but they didn't even care my car was swapped at all so that's going to go back out eventually. I want to get a nice um, intake. Actually, the car's going to get boosted at some point. So all that will go at some point and go bare cans. But for right now, this is the current setup. Down there, you can see the Diesel Geek short shift kit, which is the best thing you can possibly do. So this is a um, AAA VR6 five-speed transmission, but that is a Mark IV O2J shift tower that's inside the transmission as well. That way, I can run the Diesel Geek short shift kit. So you can do the Mark IV tower swap onto your car to run all the Mark IV accessories. I highly, highly, highly recommend you do that because the O2A1 from the VR6, even fully rebuilt that I did, was still like sloppy and not that great. This is the best thing you can possibly do. So VR6 paired with O2J, it's just like the best winning combo. It's gonna feel amazing. Best thing you can possibly do. So other than that, this is pretty much it partial shave bay it's cleaned out painted um semi 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 wire tuck nothing too crazy it doesn't extend anything um but yeah this is pretty much it there's a Eurosport strut bar up top over there and then after that it's pretty much that's pretty much it oh and then in the back we have the um the heat wrapped header going down uh but other than that that thinks that's pretty much all there is to it it's very very simple it works does what it needs to do it sounds incredible i love it the cams are great um it just works as it's supposed to i said one day we'll go to boost and make some good power to this thing but for now this is like mm, it works great all right so i think that's just about it going over my car there's obviously a lot more like little things here and there that's been done to the car that I didn't quite go over but that would take absolutely forever. I covered all the major things in the car, suspension, the engine, exhaust, um, the wheels, this and that. Do you have any other questions that I didn't cover? Drop them down below. I'll try and answer those questions for you. But that's uh, that's my lead. My little car that started out, what, nine years ago back in Florida is now here across the entire world in Germany. It, it's just a crazy journey this car has been through and it's so awesome. It's nowhere near stopping. We have so many things to still do. Uh, the car right now is probably scheduled for next week to go see the inspection guy and get past and be good to go. Then we'll have long plates for the car and then we can go explore Europe and I cannot wait. Again, for everyone who's saying the car needs paper for all this stuff in the car, it doesn't. The car is not registered through Germany. It's registered through the military so we don't need two papers and that kind of stuff. It's a bit different for us. Not saying we can do whatever we want but the rules um, are just a little bit different for how our car are so uh, like i said that if you have any other questions leave them down below but that is a nice overview of my 1997 volkswagen jetta gls little miley